A lot of the people that buy these machines buy them because of the saw stop blade breaking technology. And that certainly is understandable. But when they get these machines in their shop, they're finding that the saw stop technology is wrapped in a world class table saw. The technology really is impressive, but so is the table saw itself. The contoured front of the cabinet really is impressive, but there's lots of other features that let the saw stop be a better table saw. The large chromed cast iron hand wheels make it easy to adjust the saw, and the locking pins lock the wheels down without tweaking these settings. The bevel scale on the front of the cabinet has large numbers and is clearly printed to be easy to read. Take a look inside the cabinet and it's easy to see that saw stop intends this machine to keep on running for a very long time. The whole trunnion assembly is very well made and very tough. Combine all this mass with a bunch of smooth running rotating parts and you can see why this saw is so quiet and smooth while it's running. A door on the other side of the cabinet gives you access to the blade breaking cartridge. This makes checking, setting up, or replacing the cartridge a lot easier. The clearance between the blade and the surface of the cartridge is important and they give you a special tool and a gauge for setting this. This saw weighs well over 500 pounds and I need to move it around in my shop so I opted for their industrial mobile base. This base has four swiveling casters so you can push it in whatever direction you need to go. When you want to move the saw you just give the pedal a few pumps and that raises it up and it's on the wheels and ready to go. When you get the saw to where you want to use it, you step on the lower pedal and the saw gently sinks down to the floor. I know it takes a few seconds to get down there, but it's better than something this expensive going katunk on the floor. The assembly and use instructions are both plentiful and very well written. The hardware comes in nicely arranged blister packs that are labeled that tells you where in the machine they go. If you're reading the manual and these blister packs, you almost have to be trying to mess up this assembly. SawStop also includes many of the tools that you need for assembling and using this saw. Most table saws let you figure out how to get the middle of the extension table level with the cast iron wings. SawStop added a little bracket here that lets you dial that right in easily. Here's something else that I liked. This protective covering lets you have an extension table that looks brand new after you get it installed. I kept finding nice little touches like this all through the assembly of the SawStop machine. During assembly, I always check the blade to miter slot parallelism. Right out of the box, the saw stop was well under a thousandth out, so I just left it alone. I also had to set up my rip fence. That responded very well to adjustments and only took a couple of minutes to get it so it's tailed out just about three thousandths at the rear of the fence. Saw stop even came up with a better throat insert. When put in place, the buttons on the front of this insert interlock with buttons in the cavity itself and hold the front of the insert down. And then when you set the other end of the insert down, you push this bail downwards and that locks the back of the plate into the saw. This is very easy to do, but it makes the insert very secure. The shape of the saw stop blade guard looks pretty common, but the features you find in it are anything but common. This guard has been designed from the ground up to be both effective and easy to use. This upper channel goes directly to the inch and a half dust port located on the back of the guard. Connect this and the upper ports to a good dust collector and there's very little dust that escapes. These independent side panels add to the dust collection and your safety. This short set of anti-kickback poles is for very thin stock. When the stock gets thicker you can drop the larger anti-kickback poles. This wood stop prevents wood that's thicker than the blade is tall from entering the guard. If the wood is thicker than the height of the blade, it can get hung up halfway through the cut and force you into a very dangerous situation. The height of this wood stop is adjustable so you can make sure that it's set correctly. Changing from the blade guard system to the riving knife is very quick, easy, and tool free. Remove the insert plate, lift the locking handle, and the entire guard assembly lifts right out. Place the riving knife into the mount and push the handle down to lock it in place. And that's it. The size and location of the locking handle make it easy to be sure that you have the assemblies in firmly and locked in place. The T-square style rip fence is nicely made from heavy duty materials. The magnified cursors are adjustable so you can be sure that they're reading the large easy to read scale perfectly. The locking handle for the fence is very comfortable and very effective. 
Cuts to the left of the blade can be perfectly accurate because of a separate scale and correctable cursor. Because of the saw stop blade breaking, there's a little more to the control panel. When we turn the main power switch on, the system goes through a couple of checks, and then the green light stays on that tells us we're ready to cut wood. We pull the bottom of the red panel out to start the saw, and then just push the paddle in to shut it off. And you could bump that with your leg to shut it off if need be. You'll notice when we shut it off that the green light flickers, and that tells us that the blade is still running down. When the blade stops, the light goes to solid green. This chart on the side of the switch box shows you what the lights mean in their different configurations, different flashing patterns. We'll cover more about the lights in part two of this review. You get a set of keys with this saw that goes in the side of the switch. This key lets you put the saw in what they call a bypass mode that shuts off the blade brake itself but leaves the detection system in force. We can use this bypass system to test a piece of wood to see if it would have set off the blade brake. We'll demonstrate this bypass mode in part two of this review. Well, it's time to see if this thing will actually cut wood. So I've got the dust collection hooked up to both parts, and we'll show you how good this dust collection really is. Only the dust collector is running right now. And there we turned on the saw, and you can hear that it makes hardly any noise at all over the dust collector. You'll notice that there's virtually no sawdust left on the table. The blade guard is hinged, so you can just lift that up and then it can realign the fence to get the right cut on my board. Then when we're done setting the fence, we just drop the blade guard back down and we're ready to go. And we'll make a second rip cut and see if we can generate any more sawdust on the table. And it doesn't look like it. Oh, there's one little speck. I could tell you all day long how good this dust collection is, but it's better if you see it for yourself. Next I'll cut a piece of Luang plywood. This stuff always leaves a bunch of sawdust on the table. At least it used to. I am going to cover the blade break system in part two of this review, but I wanted you to see that there's a whole lot of table saw built around that brake system. I know you wanted to see the hot dog thing, and we're going to do that. And we're going to try something else with a sausage, but that all comes in part two of this review.